Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, or with the name of Allah, the most beneficent, most merciful, or the most, or the wombness, um, or the, you know, the one that sustains everything. Um, we'd like to thank you and welcome you for watching once again another power packed, explosive video with Earth Islamic Action Gorilla Minded Productions with me, Muhammad Solomon, and myself, Simon Balsinak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. You won't want to miss what we're talking about today. Today we're looking at uh, a phenomenon that has occurred, I wouldn't say in um, without, for Islamic history, but has occurred in England anyway. Uh, recently we had a, a female scholar come from Canada and she helped to establish a female only mosque in London, England. So uh, presently, um, there's a female only mosque called the Inclusive Mosque and it's a mosque um, run and set up by women and the reason why they set up this mosque is because they believe that at the moment the present kind of patriarchal system that has been formulated or put out as Islam is uh, making it difficult or segregating women from the mosque. So they feel they need to have this mosque to have a space in which women can go to the mosque, pray to Allah and not feel uh, intimidated with a barrier or a shield or anything like this. So their argument is, why can't women lead salah? That's what they're saying. They're saying, why can't women lead salah? Where is the evidence that they can't lead salah? And if in the Quran, Allah says, uh, men and women um, from, from one another, why can't they lead salah? Are women less spiritual because they can't lead salah? If a man follows a woman in salah, is that a bad thing? Is that haram? Is that forbidden? Now, just before Brother Simon comes in, I've, I've seen a video by um, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf on this very topic. And he actually said that this issue of women leading Salat, this issue of women having their own in masjids, is nothing new. It's been going on for thousands of years within Islamic uh, discussion and, uh, and, and Islamic thought. Some scholars have come down saying it's completely around, it's forbidden. Um, some scholars, like Ibn Tamir, believe it or not, have said it's permissible in certain circumstances. So, it's nothing new. So let's not pretend like it's a new, it's a new phenomenon. It's something that's obviously um, has been going on for quite a while. But obviously we're looking at it because what we want to look at is um, how much is sexism, how much is dogma, uh, how much is misogyny playing a role uh, in Islam today. So, Brother Simon, I believe you're going to just quote from the Bible here, which is interesting. Once again, we're showing you the different scriptures. Not to put you one of them down, but to show you what each scripture is saying for you to make up your own mind. Yeah, but that's right. Okay, so uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to quote from uh, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17, because it's feeding into what we've been talking about re uh, recently about mm -hmm. this idea of hierarchy, about yeah. lordship, a patriarchal system. Yes, yes, um, yeah. And how... And how um, Looking specifically the Quran and the Bible, mm -hmm. and um, we're applying it today to this issue of women leading prayer. Yes. And traditions from the Bible and, and the Quran. Mm -hmm. So as I say, uh, Corinthians um, ten seventeen. Um, sorry, not ten seventeen. Eleven, chapter three. Yeah. Uh, chapter eleven, verse three starts. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. The head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So already have this hierarchical system. system yes. Yeah. Then it proceeds, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonours his head. Wow. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonours her head, for that is one and the same as if the head were shaved. Mm -hmm. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But wow. it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her be covered. Um, so, it's a bit ambiguous there. It sort of suggests that there's something not quite right about women. Not having their head, having their head covered and being in the church or being in a religious setting yeah. and not being having their head covered. That's right. Um, but um, So the, the idea is that a woman can't prophesy or can't attend a religious ritual with her head covered. But the even more pernicious perhaps is the idea that um, man is the head. Man is the head. And That's right. So, so that's that God's man, then woman. Yeah, so... so if you have a sort of a, a, <laughs> a sliding uh, scale of exactly, variety. you have God and then, <laughs> uh, and then man leading the prayers and the congregation and the women behind them. Right. So, so it's this sort of um, pyramid structure. Pyramid structure. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which, which seems to have um, just to Islam, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Dictated how prayers are supposed to be performed. Yes. Um, 
so that seems to be the, the biblical take on this. Yes. Of course, interestingly, it's, it's sort of the Anglican Church that's taken the lead on this, hasn't it, with the idea of women bishops? Bishop, and yeah, well, the Catholic Church is totally against it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you have this split already, not the, yes. for the first time, <laughs> between the two denominations of Christianity uh, about how, how the issues of women uh, leaders, religious leaders, yeah. should, should be addressed. I think, I think it's a very serious topic because obviously. Are we saying that women are less spiritual than men? Are we saying that women haven't got the right to, you know, to lead the prayer because of their their gender? I mean, it, it's kind of weird because, in a way, first of all, we're, all embryos in the in in the womb are female, and then after a certain point, then the male develops, and nature is geared towards females because it's the two uh, X chromosomes, and men have X Y in it to make a female. So, um, men carry X and Y, women carry X X. So that means nature's three to one to have a female. And um, we talked about Allah using the word Raham, which is womb when he goes Rah Rahman and Rahim. He's using this feminine principle, yeah. um, using Raham to, to, you know, to, to introduce himself in Bismarck and Rahim. Um, so it's not merciful, it's the wombness and the nourisher, the nurturer. Which you said was you know, could be very um, empowering for women. Empower very empowering for women. Even the, the fact that we call ourselves so Ummah comes from the word Ummi, mother. So it's not brotherhood, it's like a motherhood. Mm. And when we go to Hajj, we see men and women together. Like, there's no segregation. Mm. There's no cloth put between them. Yeah. Um, you know, they, 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 they do their prayers side by side even on Hajj. And we don't even think about and it. No one says anything about it. No. So mm. um, I think there's some serious questions that need to be asked. Because obviously what we're trying to do, in one of the last video that we did, uh, we were looking at that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Allah and how we shouldn't have this intermediary thing of the sheikh or the rabbi or the priest. And that which we believe creates this mechanical Islam that almost deviates you and creates these people almost as gods, as almost as pagans. I mean, the, the pagans had these idols. But let's put this, if I throw one thing into the mix, mm -hmm. maybe the problem is that there aren't enough women um, guides. Which is correct. You know, for example, if you're a woman who wants to know something uh, in a Sharia sense about women hygiene... Mm -hmm. um, to go to a man. Well, you, you can only go. It's ridiculous. Man. So, if, if so, if, if you if you need the, if you have the need to disclose those intimate details about yourself, you're going to bottle them up, aren't you? Of course, it will. You're, yeah. not, you're not going to express them to some man who. No. Who, who's that got an idea about your anatomy? Yeah. You know? So, um, so the importance of having women leaders, about women guys, scholars and women, yeah, um, yeah, is perhaps another aspect of this problem that's not been addressed. Maybe it's not so much that shapes or scholars themselves are. Um, Oh, and the problem. Just, yeah, the problem is yeah. the idea that there's, there's a lack of equality. I think the board. I would say that the sheikhs and scholars are probably the gatekeepers of a system that is focused on a matriarchal, patriarchal, uh, patriarchal um, construct. Yeah, and a narrative that kind of excludes women. Um, you know, there's a good friend of mine um, who I was talking to recently, and she was telling me about you know her concern is like, for example, lots and lots of white British girls and women are coming Muslim, but you know, with, you know, they have quite, they have a quite maybe an open, uh, empowering almost, you know, like uh, empowering empowered woman, as empowered woman prior to becoming Muslim. They suddenly become Muslim. All of a sudden, they start, you know, for her, they start donning all this black stuff, and they start thinking in a particular mechanical way. And she's wondering why is it when prior to Islam they were very open, they were very about female empowerment. They weren't taking any nonsense and stuff. But as soon as they became Muslim, they became submissive and. You know, and all this stuff about, oh, you know, um, you know, and almost is like, so she said that, what, you know, what's that about? Maybe it's because there's no, as I say, there's no outlook for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought into this patriarchal view of Islam, this, um, uh, this dictatorship, if you like, this autocracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which, which prevents them from expressing And interesting that you use the word dictatorship. That's just me using a pun on it, but, but um, very masculine. The, the idea that... that um, you know, at the end of the day, it's disempowering, isn't it? If 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 all you see is, is you know, you can't express your, the full extent of your needs because there's no woman to. Well, obviously, if, if you're a woman going through your menses, you can't really go to a man and go, "Well, you know the pain you get down in your groin area every month that hurts, and it's like someone scraping the inside of your stomach with a fork." Like he's going, "Oh yeah, I don't really understand that, don't I?" He got have a clue what you're on about, mm -hmm. and this is what happens as well. I mean, we've had this happen in England where. Vulnerable sisters have come Muslim, they've got credible issues when they discuss whether it's their, a female issue to do with female hygiene or their female biology or issues as a Muslim sister, and they go to certain men, certain scholars, who exploit them, yeah, who sexually abuse, abuse them, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because there's no, there's no scholar, female scholar. There's no to turn to, to, turn to because they've, they've made sure that the avenues for female scholarship are blocked. Even though we know the first university in Morocco, for example, or in Spain, I believe in Morocco or Spain, was set by a woman. You know, we know that women have played an integral part in the establishment of Islam. And Lady Fatima, of course. Lady Fatima, of course. She, of course she, was, she was a teacher. She so actually gave a lot of khutbas, she gave talks and everything. Khadija alayhi salam. So, you know, what, what's new? It's nothing new, but it's just because of the fact that Islam has been taken to different lands, different people, and different patriarchal constructs, they've now put their cultural misogyny on Islam and make people who, who when they come Muslim, think, oh, this is Islam. This is what the Quran says. In terms, in terms of equality of men and women, the Quran says in many, many, many verses, as the scholars always say. There's many verses on this, but what is this with one of them, or one or two, and it says here, um, chapter 40, verse 40 in the Quran, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, whoever commits a sin is required, is requited for just that. And whoever works righteousness, male or female, while believing, these will enter paradise and wherein they receive provisions without any limits. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Allah is clearly saying, um, even if in his, um, what is it here? We go to chapter 33, verse 35 again. All the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahim. The submitting men, the submitting women, the believing men, the believing women, the obedient men, the obedient women, the truthful men, the truthful women, the steadfast men, the steadfast women, the reverent men, the reverent women, the charitable men, the charitable women, the fasting men, the fasting women, in the chaste men, the chaste women, and the men who commemorate Allah frequently, and the commemorating women, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and the great recompense. MashaAllah. So you can see Allah has made, the, uh, made this justice between men and women incumbent. He's made it that whatever works they do, whatever they do, in terms of their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that He will recompense them that. He's not going to limit them by their gender or their biology. And if they're both capable of righteous deeds... Exactly. What's, what's preventing a woman from leading Salat? Exactly. If they're both capable of righteous deeds... Maybe some will argue, oh yeah, but you know, she menstruates and she menstruates and, and this type of thing. Well, the bottom line, yeah, what if she's not menstruating, right? Also as well, we come out of women. We've got no problem with that, have we? So why is it she, we're good enough to come out of, but well, she's not good and she brings us up from a baby, to um, adulthood, but she's not good enough for us to bow and pray. You'll bow and kiss your mother's head, won't you? You'll bow and kiss her feet, won't you? So if she's just bowing and, and directing you towards Allah, what's wrong with that? Even the brother was saying, what if there's a screen then between you and her? And, but she's still leading Salah. What would you say then? Now, not many of you might get angry and get vexed and get one of Brother Simon and Brother Solomon, they're pushing this thing, stop full of Wudu Bilai, and they want to curse and the rest of it. What we're saying is calm down, brothers and sisters, calm down. We ain't saying that we're pushing that. We're saying that what's wrong with the discussion? It's not the fascist police here. It's not the thought police. It's not me saying for us to think, to act, to think things out for ourselves and to question. And Islamic action, we're about questioning the so-called questioners or the ones who say they come, they have the, all the answers. We say we have all the answers, but we're about questioning. So don't get mad. Just think for yourself, critical thinking. There's a hadith in which uh, one of the, was quoted that when um, the children at Taif stole the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they wanted, and, and Ijibu Alayhi Salaam came and said, I could crush the children uh, right now. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, don't crush the children. He didn't show anger towards the children. He was covered in blood. He did not show anger towards the children. He said, no, leave them because if they don't come Muslim, maybe inshallah, their children will become Muslim. Imam Ali Islam, when the Kafir spit in his face, he didn't get angry. He calmly stood up, gave the Kafir back his sword, and fought him and, and took his life on the principle of justice. So we're not saying take anybody's life, <clears throat> but what we're saying is just this is just about people thinking for themselves. And clearly, if you're watching this video, you must be enlightened anyway. But what we're talking about is the role of women and how Islam does not denigrate the woman. Islam lifts up the woman and empowers her, but it's these matriarchal systems 
Right, we please. Yeah, we don't want to be behind a screen because we're too macho for that. <laughs> Is that. Isn't that what it boils down to a lot yes. of the time? Yeah. Isn't that why we don't want women leaving us for that? Because we'll be back where the women used to be. We don't want that. No, we don't want to be the back of the bus. We want to be at the head of the bus. Because as men, we have to always be the leader, yeah? We have to always. Why do you think men have all these heart attacks? Why do you think men don't live long in society? Because it's all this pressure to be Mr. Macho, to be the man, to be this, to be that and that. Yes, provide for your woman. Yes, stand up and have a backbone. No one's saying that. But you don't need to put yourself out and cause problems. You need to be a problem. Now, these people in London, this sister leading the cellar, we're not saying that we will, you know, we're going to 100% follow and go behind the, and follow her. But what we're saying is that if she feels she has a right to do that, we're not here to condemn her and call her a kafir and put her in hell. As the brother was even telling us, I think he said, in the Quran, how many verses are on, on, on the word hypocrite or kafir compared Bakara. to the word mutakini and bakara? 17 so bakara? as opposed to 2, was it? Oh, for the word kafir? For the kafir, 17 for mutakin. Munafik. Munafik. 17 for munafik. For, for the kafir, kafir and 2 for mutakin. Yeah. So it shows that when, in the Quran, the emphasis is a lot on not so much kafirs, but on hypocrites. Mm. Hypocrites, brothers and sisters. So what we're saying is that we don't want to be pushing the sexist Islam or patriarchal Islam or matriarchal Islam as such. We just want Islam. We want Islam that allows us to think for ourselves, act for ourselves. Obviously within, within um, the boundaries of Deen, you know, we're not going to say Allah is a woman or something, you know. But at the same time, we're not here to deny the other half of our species their full rights as human beings. There are very good reasons for giving them their rights as we <laughs> Exactly. And in fact, women have rights... More rights than men. And, uh, you know, and in fact, polygamy is the right of the woman, not the man. And you think, what are you talking about? It's true because a man cannot see a woman that's married and marry her. It's forbidden. But a woman can see a man that's married and ask to be married to that man knowing he's already married. So who's got the right there? The man hasn't got the right. And even in the marriage formula, even in the marriage formula, the woman asks the man, will you marry me? And he has to agree to it. He has to go, yeah, I agree, because if it was reversed the other way around, he could force it on her and make her agree. But Allah's in power within her that if she's not in agreement of it, it can't take place. SubhanAllah. But we'll look at marriage another time, inshallah. It's another we time will, let's go talk another time, inshallah. Well, unfortunately, we we'll come to the end again. It comes quick, doesn't it? It does come quick, mashallah, mashallah. But hopefully the knowledge will have sunk in. Hopefully, once again, brothers and sisters, you have learned something this, uh, um, from this video. Once again, please subscribe to Islamic Action TV. Email us or send in a Twitter. And, um, you know, keep the comments coming in if they're going to be positive. No trolling, please. By the grace of Allah. And until we meet again, I leave you in peace. I leave you um, in love. My name is Muhammad Solomon signing off for now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.